Selling lobsters is definitely a complicated process. I've eaten so much lobster in my life, I can actually taste the difference in where they are caught it. My name is Steven. My company is Aquabes, and my job is to source the best seafood for chefs and restaurateurs. Do I have any nicknames? Um, the seafood sorcerer. Come here and pick this one up. Free. What was this called here? Lobster is not just a lobster. A lobster is just like a diamond. There's different cuts, there's different grades, there's different size. There's different areas where you catch lobster that has different qualities. Certain times of the year in Maine is a little bit better, in Massachusetts is a little bit better, or Canada is even better. You must go through millions of pounds from different areas to figure out which area has the best lobster and what time of the year has the best quality of the lobster. We used to go through about 60 to 80,000 pounds per week. On a holiday week, we can go up to 150 to 200,000 pounds of lobsters. There's many types of lobsters in the world, but there is one which we are familiar in the Northeast. That's the American lobster or Homeris americanus. It's with the two claws. Before the pandemic, we were servicing over 175 restaurants just in New York City itself. We can basically ship to anywhere in the world in less than 24 hours, even Singapore, which has the longest flight, like 19 hours. Japan, Korea, China, Spain, France, and Italy, all over the world. So a lobster is just not a lobster. So these are your Greek bronzinos. So they want a backside butterfly. It's, it's not hard, it's just different. So we'll just do a couple. I cut off the gills, the fins. We always have to improvise our tools. This is actually a fabric shear. We're not just a restaurant fishmonger. I mean, we'll do as you say. We'll customize anything for you. And I'm trying to make at least work as possible for the chefs and the prep guys in the, in the restaurant. I think just through trial and error, I figure what's the easiest way to kill a fish. You have to sort of develop your own style or you kind of have to adapt. So cutting fish is also about repetition and feel. You got to feel where the bones are. Backside butterfly, let's do two simple cuts. And then you'll have that's the spot. I used to do this a long time ago, but since the pandemic, you kind of have to do everything all over again, which is great. I do miss cutting fish sometimes. Very clean, very simple. That's my brother. Every night, my brother Freeman, he goes to the Holland Fish Market. Morning. Around 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. He'll check his email. He'll see what the orders are for the restaurants. Restaurants do like to have all their deliveries as early as possible in the morning. Right now, there's about like four or 5,000 pounds of seafood right now. Due to the pandemic, outdoor seating, right now everything is dependent on the weather pattern. So restaurateurs are just like us seafood people. We gotta look at the weather to determine if we are able to sell anything. Fresh ice is important every day. So here's Freeman, he's my brother. He Hi. looks like me with glasses. Everybody in the market knows him and he deals with all the chefs. Morning, Aquabet. This is Jimmy. What's up guys? He does a lot of my lobster buying in Canada. Hey Jimmy, how's it looking? Looks like money. No, you gotta <laughs> say A1. He handles all my lobsters. You got fish, you got pen, you got this trick. Family business, he's my nephew. He's my other right hand man. Even though he looks younger, he knows almost everything about lobsters just as much as I do. I have a couple guys over here that's great team. 
Many of them have been with me over 10 years. There's a giant tile fish over here. We're gonna stick that in today. Kingfish. We got one of these, Caravel Jack. When people say, I can find stuff, I'll try to find them whatever they want. It's the Akira Segundo way. Yeah, so one person asking for like that specific fish. He looks more than 25 pounds, but he's pretty heavy. Cermak is just a brand. When you have really fresh salmon, there's almost this smell that's almost like watermelon. I can't describe it. These are really beautiful crawfish. Louisiana's. Mud bugs. I got everything. I have seafood from around the world in New York City. <laughs> we sell almost every variety of seafood, but our main specialty is lobsters. We can hold about 7,000 pounds of lobsters over here. It's only the best quality comes in here, so people can hand pick their own lobsters. In our tanks, we always separate by region and size. I have customers who prefer New Brunswick lobsters. This is a Canadian hard shell. You can tell by the striations over here. It's nice and dark. And imagine this is the seafloor. And this lobster is walking. And the claws are heavier, so they're actually dragging their claws onto the floor. These are PEI lobsters. PEIs, majority of the time, you can't really see it as much on the bigger ones. We call them Popeyes because they tend to have bigger claws and smaller tails. Nova Scotia lobsters over here, some Maine lobsters up here, and I also have Massachusetts lobsters down there as well. We keep our waters about 36 to 38 degrees. Uh, lobsters are carnivorous and they will eat each other. So once you hibernate them, they won't be as active. So the secret to keeping good lobsters is to have cold, cold water. Our standard for a lobster crate is 100 pounds net weight. Almost everyone in my company, by just lifting a crate, we can really tell if it's overweight or underweight. We just do it so much that we really know. This guy is dangerous. Sometimes they can't unband it. When we get lobsters from the fishermen, if there is one female big lobster, Unband it, you put it in a crate, they will pretty much tear off every single other claw. Don't mess around, it does hurt. I mean, if you're dealing with millions of pounds every year, you're gonna get caught one time. I'll show you the difference between a male and a female lobster. On this, this hand is a male, and this hand is a female. You'll see that the side flares out a little bit more to protect the eggs. If you look at the first appendage, this is a male. You can tell by this is a hard fin. On the female, this is a softer fin, that's a female. This is a PEI lobster, but an old shell. In any lobster, there's actually a line down the middle. You can see that it's starting to split over here. So between spring and summer, when the water temperature turns about 58 degrees, they know I need to change shells now. That's how you get soft shell lobsters every year. When I pick a lobster out, I like to see that it has nice dark colors on the bottom side of the claw, just because I know it's an old shell or hard shell lobster. On your main soft shell lobsters, you cook a 100 pound of lobster, you might get 11 to 14 pounds. If you cook a 100 pound of Canadian lobster, you'll get 22 to 24 pounds. For chefs, food cost is everything, and this is something we need to be very wary about. We need to keep them happy and give them the best product. These are your New York chicks, the bigger in size. We're gonna bring these over to the district right now, and uh, we'll see you there. Chef Omar, hey, how, you doing? how are you? Good, how are you? Good. What's going on, baby? How you doing, Chef? Good. You got your main clothes today? They look great. They smell great. They, don't, they smell like the ocean. They don't smell like anything else. Behind you, Chef. Behind. These came down last night from down east Maine. So it's okay. really, when you say down east Maine, it's actually the tip of Maine, the northern part of Maine. So right. this area and all these islands have really good rocky bottoms where a lot of these lobsters have a sweeter taste, right? 
So these came in the last night. Literally, they're from the ocean to you. Going into the weekend, about 100, 150 a day. Going into the weekend, we usually go to about maybe three to four. Last week was quite busy. You almost ran out. So we're trying to up it a little bit. We'll wait about 15 minutes, get them nice and cold. Okay. And then we'll uh, put a couple lobsters up here, break them down, get the meat out. We'll show we do a couple cocktails, which is a split lobster in the shell. We'll just crack the claws so people can get into the meat. And then we'll break the lobsters completely down. And we take that lobster meat out way in for our lobster roll. So other trick that you can do, most people will crush it this way. Yeah. I know that's the that's yeah, consensus. Like but I actually push, if you can see from this angle, up, go like that. Push down a little bit. Oh, that's perfect. That's the row, right? It is. To go. me, that's my favorite part. Yeah, I love that so. Perfect. Great. Awesome. Perfect tail. This is our meat that we just got from downstairs. So we're looking for five ounces worth of meat. There you go. I'm generous today. The key thing about a lobster is you definitely want to toast either side to have the bun warm. Take a little bit of Old Bay mayonnaise. Big dice, because people want to see the meat. The key thing right here is clarified butter. Last little bit. Do a little celery seed on the top, homemade bun, plenty of lobster, little salad, tastes great. Every oh, single lobsters that we've gotten, we actually have to grade and grade it right. one by one. We had to put on the scale one by one. We had to feel for the firmness, the hardness. Right, right, right. Oh, really? You actually do it? We actually do it. Our quality control is pretty much the best. My mother and father, they started this business when I was just a baby. Um, my father passed away when I was eight. Coming from the ground up, being poor, we used to eat leftover for three days in a row. And working as a kid, I remember eight, nine years old, you get off of elementary school and around 2.30, 3 o'clock, and we used to work until midnight every day, even as a kid, just to help out the family. And it went on for years until we actually got a stable footing to make you know, ends meet. And we saw that uh, doing seafood was lucrative. I mean, it kept the bills going, so we kept on building upon that. And since that was our only lifeline, we actually put all our energy into it. And that just became a passion for us to really hone our craft and be really good seafood people. Hmm. So, just came off the boat. It's been purged a day. So, it looks like these are clean and just give it a little soak and they should be ready for service. It's, it's funny now, yeah. but when you're younger, you don't understand. But now that I'm older, I do appreciate, you know, the stuff that I went through. And I think a lot of people don't realize how hard work you need to put in to get to where you are. Success is not just instantly overnight. You have to build upon it layer by layer by layer. So right now, we're just setting up stations for different grades. Um, every size will have a different crate. And this way, after we finish, we're going to color code them. So we're going to take some lobsters off, check for hard lobsters, check for firm lobsters, and then we're going to grade it by size. We're very meticulous on the sizing because lots of different restaurants, they want to use uh, place-specific ones. Food cost is important, so we actually scale everything one by one. Over here you have your traditional in-ground tank. It's almost built like the style that it had in Maine. But the difference is that we built the in-ground. Same thing, a self-circulation tank. We're landlocked, so all our water is from the ocean on this tank right now. 
When we build a biofilter, we'll have the, the water suck down, go into a pump, go to a compressor, shoot out, out of a protein skimmer. We made this ourselves. We figured out the math to make it as good as possible to be efficient. And in this tank right here, we can hold about 25,000 pounds of lobsters. You know, we do handle a lot of lobsters throughout the year, but I'm still a very hands-on owner. I, I do like to hand deliver stuff still. I got firm shell lobsters and I got some hard shell lobsters. I still need to feel a lobster like, is this quality up to spec? I need to see if my guys are packing it correctly. If they're not packing correctly, I need to make sure that, hey, you got to change this out. You're not doing it correctly. Let's give them the best lobster. Take it back. We got to do something about this. Experience is everything in the seafood business. You need years and years of experience, years and years of practice. Um, you need to take a little bit of this guy's, what they say, a little bit of what this fisherman says, and put it all together to make your own assessment. I know chefs try to recreate or mimic a, a flavor or, or, or dish somewhere that they have seen before or they've tasted somewhere when they travel it out. But I think one of the key ingredients in cooking is fresh ingredients. It's what kind of ingredients you get, when you get it, so you can create the best dish. And that's something we, we try to do for every restaurant and every chef. There's definitely people who are smarter than me in lobsters, but I think I'm, uh, I'm probably in the 1%. It's a never ending story, but I'm still learning. Even if you wash your hands and you're about to head home and you think you don't smell, and you go home and you take the elevator or something and then you start smelling something weird, it's yourself. <laughs>